while Cornell Medicine is a very special place, we sense it in everything we do. As we grapple with unknowns and seek breakthroughs that could reshape the world, you see it as we comfort and heal. You feel it when we bring the best out in each other, never too small to think big, and never so big that we lose sight of why we're here. We meet the mysteries of medicine with humility and resolve, with curiosity and with a belief in the possible, always moving forward with a commitment not simply to treat patients, but to care for them as we work to reshape healthcare and grow as a center of learning and healing. New buildings expand our possibilities. Research gives us new hope. As we become more diverse and dynamic, we stay centered on a fundamental idea. While Cornell Medicine is where everything connects. It isn't only what we learn, it's how we use it, how we build on our legacy and strive to make medicine ever more personal. Between our faculty and the next generation of physicians, for our community and for everyone we serve. Medicine is moving at a stunning pace and we are accelerating it. We are not afraid to challenge convention or envision new ways of teaching. For us, a diploma never marks an end, it means a new beginning. We are bolder and brighter than ever before, and our future will be even better. Welcome students, loved ones, staff, and faculty to the matriculation ceremony for the class of 2024 at Weill Cornell Medical College. I'm Yoon Kang, Senior Associate Dean for Education and the Richard P. Cohen Associate Professor of Medical Education, and I am thrilled that you are all here for this wonderful occasion. Usually we begin the academic year with a white coat ceremony for our new students. It is one of the most celebrated academic traditions at Weill Cornell in which students receive their first white coat as a rite of passage into the field of medicine. The white coat itself is much more than the uniform of our profession. It is a symbol of our commitment to humanism and to care of the patient. Students, you will receive your ceremonial white coats as well as a stethoscope provided by Weill Cornell Medicine alumni at a later date when we are together on campus. Today, however, is also a very special milestone. Today, students, we officially launch your medical training and professional identity development with a matriculation ceremony honoring the beginning of your journey here at Weill Cornell. And although there are so many evolving new normals due to the COVID-19 pandemic as you begin this journey, the excellence of our core medical education program and student experience remain unchanged. We've reimagined our approach to your medical training in ways that reflect the new normals in our lives and in patient care. And we have found innovative and will continue to find innovative ways for you to engage with one another and with our vibrant Weill Cornell community. There are so many tremendous Weill Cornell faculty who have joined us remotely for the celebration. They're as eager as I am to get to know each and every one of you and to meet you in person in the days to come. Class of 2024, you are entering medicine at an extraordinary time in our nation's history. Physicians are needed now more than ever. You, Class of 2024, are an exceptional class. We're confident that you will make a difference in the lives of your patients and a profound impact on the landscape of academic medicine in the years to come. You're the future of medicine and the future of Weill Cornell, and we are so proud to welcome you to the Weill Cornell Medicine family. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Augustine Choi, Dean of Weill Cornell Medicine and the Provost for Medical Affairs of Cornell University. Dr. Choi came to New York City in 2013 from Harvard, where he was the Parker B. Francis Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Chief of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Dr. Choi joined Weill Cornell as chairman of the Joan and Sanford I. Wild Department of Medicine and the physician-in-chief of New York Presbyterian Hospital Weill Cornell Medical Center before becoming our dean in 2017. He received his medical degree from the University of Louisville and completed his residency at Duke Medical Center, 
followed by a fellowship in pulmonary and critical care medicine at Johns Hopkins University. Dr. Choi is a premier physician scientist with expertise in the pathology and biology of lung diseases. He is the author of over 300 original publications, 16 book chapters, and more than 70 reviews. He is a member of the American Society of Clinical Investigation and the Association of American Physicians. An innovator in all aspects of the academic mission, Dr. Choi has a long-standing commitment to training the next generation of healthcare and scientific leaders, and he has mentored more than 70 trainees and faculty members. Dr. Choi has also been a strong advocate for diversity and racial equity in medicine. But as recent events have brought greater awareness to racial injustice, including healthcare disparities, he has addressed those issues head on with a number of significant reforms here at our institution. He has also been a strong voice on the national front, sharing his knowledge and experience on steps all medical colleges can take to increase the numbers of black doctors and improve medical outcomes for our underserved communities. In addition to his outstanding resume, Dr. Choi is an incredibly warm and thoughtful man and a truly forward-thinking dean. I can personally assure you that he is committed to medical education and to the success of each and every one of our students. Please welcome our dean, Dr. Augustine Choi. Thank you, Dr. Kang. I'm delighted to welcome all of you to Wild Cornell Medicine. Today marks the official start of your journey to becoming a doctor and your formal introduction to the Hippocratic Oath. This is the first time we've held this ceremony in an online forum, and your fall semester will be much different than you probably ever imagined. Yet today remains a huge milestone for you and the many people who supported you along the way. You have earned a place in the class of 2024 because of your accomplishments, your values and integrity, and your unique qualities that make you a perfect fit for Wild Cornell Medicine and our culture of collaboration and caring. We are excited to have you at Wild Cornell, especially at a time when the practice of medicine is so critical to the well-being of our society. You will start off learning in a unique environment, but I know you will emerge ready to face the challenges of the 21st century. In the coming days and weeks, You'll meet classmates who may go on to become lifelong friends and colleagues, and you'll find that you are a remarkably diverse group of individuals. The class of 2024 is made up of 49% women, and 29% are from groups underrepresented in medicine. Students were born in 17 different countries and have attended 49 different undergraduate colleges, with 22% of you as first-generation college students. Eight students have already earned graduate degrees, and many have lived, studied, and worked in countries around the world. There are two especially popular names this year, with five Emilys and four Benjamins among you. As a class, you will face new experiences together and overcome new challenges. Together, you will learn the pathophysiology and pathogenesis of human diseases, and you will develop the skill sets and clinical acumen to become the best doctors you can be. I also urge you to keep in mind some additional qualities that are essential to become a caring physician. The first is a commitment to greater equity in medicine. Doctors have a responsibility to consider the social determinants of health and the barriers that prevent some groups of people from receiving the same quality of care as others. Second, and related to that, is diversity, which breeds excellence and helps us to deliver better, more culturally sensitive care to our patients. Third is mentorship. A mentor can help you navigate your career, but it's also important to give back and be a mentor to others as your progress in your training. Finally, it's important to maintain your own health and well-being and to develop habits of mindfulness, resilience, and self-care that will carry you throughout your careers. Please remember that the Dean's Office, our educational leadership and staff, your teachers, and your peers are all here to support you. 
reach out at any time if you need to talk. Again, I wish you many congratulations and all the best as you embark on this new phase of your lives. Thank you, Dean Choi. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Mary Choi. Dr. Choi is a renowned physician scientist. She is a professor of medicine in the Division of Nephrology and Hypertension at Weill Cornell Medicine and an attending physician at New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medical Center. Dr. Choi followed in the footsteps of her father, who was also a physician and received her medical degree from the University of Kansas School of Medicine. Dr. Choi completed residencies at the University of California, San Francisco, and the San Francisco VA Medical Center and Duke Medical Center, and was a clinical and research fellow in nephrology at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. An accomplished physician and researcher, Dr. Choi's NIH-funded research focuses on the cellular and molecular mechanisms of kidney injury and chronic kidney disease. She was a permanent member of the NIH study section, Molecular and Integrative Signal Transduction, and currently is a member of the Pathobiology Kidney Disease study section, and is on the editorial board of the journal, Kidney Research and Clinical Practice. At Weill Cornell Medicine, Dr. Choi served as the director of the Basic Science Research Core Curriculum in the Internal Medicine Residency Program. She is married to Dean Augustine Choi and they have two sons, both of whom also followed in their parents' footsteps and are internists here at Weill Cornell Medicine. She also serves on several key committees in the Weill Department of Medicine, including the Research Executive Committee and the Medicine Grand Rounds Award Committee. Dr. Choi is the current president of the National Korean American Medical Association. She's also extremely committed to diversity and mentorship in medicine and is passionate about advancing the careers of all women in medicine through mentorship and mutual support. Please welcome Dr. Mary Choi. Thank you, Dean Kang. It is an immense honor to be asked to speak at the matriculation ceremony for Weill Cornell Medicine's class of 2024. As I began thinking about what I would say today, I reflected back on my own past, and I realized that I would have never guessed that I would be here today addressing you now. It's been a real journey with many joys, challenges, and unexpected opportunities, and I'm thrilled and I feel so grateful for the chance to share some of the insights I've gained along the way with you, the next generation. This is an incredible time to be embarking on your medical careers. In addition to the usual excitement you must feel, I'm sure there's some trepidation and anxiety. It's become a cliche, but we are truly living in unprecedented times. And this pandemic highlights the intensely important nature of the work you have chosen to do. Doctors have never been more vital to the health of our communities. What has also become starkly apparent is the absolute necessity of scientific data and expertise to guide decision making. For the next couple of minutes, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and the path that brought me here. Perhaps you may find some similarities with your own journey. Both of my parents were refugees from the northern part of Korea who escaped to the south just before the Korean War broke out, and I was born in Seoul. My father was a pediatrician and a family practitioner, and we lived upstairs from his clinic in the center of Seoul. His local claim to fame then was always having the crispest white coat. My parents wanted us to experience different cultures and learn English, so when I was eight years old, my father got a job at Children's Hospital in Jamaica. That's the island in the Caribbean, not Jamaica, New York. And my parents, together with my younger brother, we moved to Kingston while my two older brothers stayed in Korea with our grandparents. I enrolled in a Catholic school in the first grade, not knowing a word of English. And I clearly remember sitting in the back of the classroom learning the alphabet from a picture dictionary. The nuns soon realized, however, that I was much more advanced in other areas, so I skipped a couple of grades. Five years flew by, and when it came time for my two older brothers to go to college, the entire family moved to the US so that all of us could get a better education. We landed in the middle of nowhere, yes, Kansas, like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. We were literally in middle America. 
It's the opposite of being in a place like Wild Cornell Medicine or New York City, which brings such a richness of experience that comes from being surrounded by people of diverse and varied backgrounds. As a foreign medical graduate, my father had to retrain in his 40s, redoing his internship and residency, and I'm so proud of the contributions that he made as an immigrant to this country. He was the first physician in his family, and very early on, I decided that that was what I wanted to do, too. None of my brothers became doctors, but I married a doctor during my final year of residency. It turned out that my father and his father were graduates of the same medical school, Seoul National University graduates of 1949 and 1951. Both of our families immigrated to the U.S. when we were very young. And actually, the story of our immigration is chronicled in a chapter in the book titled Journeys, an American Story, which was edited by Andrew Tisch, one of our board of overseers, and available, by the way, on Amazon.com. We're reminded that perhaps, with the exception of Native Americans, we're all immigrants, really, either as first generation or 1.5, like me, or your parents, or perhaps your grandparents, or your ancestors. Now, Augustine and I have two sons who are also doctors who went through their white coat ceremonies not too long ago. So medicine has become the family business. Often people choose medical school because they want to take care of others, and that was also the case with me. It wasn't until I became a nephrology fellow at Hopkins and had to pick a lab to work in that I discovered research. And it was an eye-opening experience and a career path that I hadn't really considered previously. The study of the kidney quickly became my passion. I wanted to understand how this intricate organ works and why it didn't work in times of disease. Cloning genes was a hot topic back then, and my first project was to clone genes for a cytokine, TGF-beta, that is at the center of the kidney's chronic disease response. Since then, I've built a career as a physician scientist, and along the way I've gained a very special perspective on the impact of being a woman in medicine as a woman physician scientist. Remember that I've had much experience early growing up as the only girl with three sibling brothers, and then as a mother of two sons and a husband at home. I've realized that major advances in medicine often stem from physician scientists who provide a crucial bridge between the bedside and the lab. At Wild Cornell Medicine, you'll have the opportunity to experience this connection firsthand early in your training through our Areas of Concentration program and I've enjoyed serving as a preceptor for the AOC workshops. I encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity to engage in an individual mentored research project. It might spark a new interest or lead you to an unexpected career path. And as I mentioned before, science is so critical as we seek to put the coronavirus behind us and as we face new and ongoing threats to public health in the future. Each of you has had a unique journey to get here with your own distinctive reasons for choosing medicine. These reasons may shift and surprise you, but they will carry you through the challenges that lie ahead. You're at the start of an incredible journey in medicine with profound responsibilities as you learn to care for patients. I've seen many members of my family at various stages of their medical training, and one of the things that's wonderful to have is a mentor. Mentors give advice, feedback, or guidance when needed, and they encourage and challenge you to reach your full potential. Your teachers can be mentors, and so can your peers and perhaps your own family members. They'll help you develop habits of lifelong learning, get you through the long hours and sleepless nights, and be there every step of the way as you learn how to be the most caring and compassionate doctor you can be to your patients. There's a lot of uncertainty right now as we struggle through this pandemic, but as you'll soon discover, there's a lot of uncertainty inherent to being a doctor. Try as we might, there are many things that are simply beyond our control. Starting medical school during these times may make you even stronger and more resilient as a physician, more empathetic with your patients, and with a deeper understanding of the vagaries of the human condition. 
So congratulations to each and every one of you on your formal matriculation at Weill Cornell Medicine. You're here because we believe you have the potential to become leaders in healthcare. Best of luck on the journey ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Choi, for those inspiring words. We look forward to being together again in the coming months when we are able to celebrate the white coat ceremony in person. In our profession, it is an ancient custom that no one may be admitted into the ranks of physician who has not first expressly accepted its responsibilities as set forth in an oath. It is now my pleasure to turn the podium back over to Dean Choi to say a few words about the significance and history of the Hippocratic Oath. Thank you, Dr. Kang. At Wall Cornell, as in many other medical colleges, we use an oath that bears the name of Hippocrates. In the 2,000 years since its creation, the Hippocratic Oath has been revised many times to reflect changes in the practice of medicine while remaining faithful to its fundamental values. Here at Wild Cornell Medical College, a committee of faculty and student representatives recast it to preserve the nobility and ancient traditions of our calling while addressing the contemporary challenges that we as physicians face in our work and in our lives. That effort was led by Dr. Joseph Finns, the E. William Davis Professor of Medical Ethics and holder of professorships in many departments, medicine, medicine and psychiatry, medical ethics in neurology, and population health sciences. Dr. Finns is also a graduate of Weill Cornell, class of 1986, and he'll be joining us today for the reading of the Hippocratic Oath. The class of 2024 had the opportunity to meet with Dr. Finns earlier today as he led the students in an exercise to rewrite portions of the oath and to reflect their own values and experiences. Students, we hope this proved to be thought-provoking and provided you some insights into the oath and its meaning to you personally. You'll not take the oath until your graduation. Nonetheless, on this day, when you start your journey as medical students, we would like you to listen to it and, as you do so, consider its significance and the impact it will have not only as you start your course of study here at Wild Cornell, but through all your years as physicians. I do solemnly vow to that which I value and hold most dear, that I will honor the profession of medicine, be just and generous to its members, and help sustain them in their service to humanity. That just as I have learned from those who preceded me, so will I instruct those who follow me in the science and the art of medicine. That, that I will recognize, recognize the, the limits, limits of, of my, my knowledge. knowledge and pursue lifelong learning to better care for the sick and to prevent illness. That I will seek the counsel of others when they are more expert, so as to fulfill my obligation to those who are entrusted to my care. That I will not withdraw from my patients in their time of need that I will lead my life and practice my art with integrity and, and honor, honor, using, using my, my power, power wisely. That whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of my patients that is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep in confidence. That into whatever house I shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick. That I will maintain this sacred trust, holding myself far aloof from wrong, from corrupting, from the tempting of others' device that above, above all, all else, else I will serve the highest interests of my patients through the practice of my science and my art. That I'll be an advocate for patients in need and strive for justice in the care of the sick. I turn now to my calling, promising to preserve its finest traditions with the reward of a long experience in the joy of healing. I make this vow freely and upon my honor. And now, as you begin your journey to become the physician who will uphold these ethical standards in the practice of medicine, it is my great pleasure to present the Weill Cornell Medical College Class of 2024. Abdul Abdul Chuki Abuka Acheba 
Monica Acosta, Nasia Ajay, Sanjana Adurthi, Bijan Amy, Leonardo Albertini Sanchez, Carlos Alcoso, Rafael Almanzar, Chase Carrington Alston, Emily Bay, Sufaya Bakshi, Alexander Baum, Elizabeth Benitez, Tehila Berger, Sunnam Batia, Nell Boris, Sheridan Bowers, Diksha Brambat, Taylor Brashear, Leslie Bull, Felipe Camelo, Benjamin Serato, Sejung Chris Chang, Emily Chang, Emily Cohen, Kaya Curtis, Michaela Dwyer, Alan Enriquez, Elliot Eaton, Nashwan Farouk, Benjamin Cannon Gaeta, Varshini Gali, Erica Glavitz, Benjamin Grant, Winston Gua, Valeria Gutierrez, Lynn Hahn, Benjamin Harrison, Benedict B. Harvey, Rachel Hill, Richie Hong, Anam Kanat Hussein, Hannah Huang, Zina Ibrahim, Danielle Isakoff, Sonali Ayer, Swarna Kiwaji, Tyler Judge, Nakul Karandikar, Natalia Karashuk, Elizabeth Kusin, June Tae Kim, Joshua S. Kim, Ashley Kim, Elizabeth Ko, Andrew Lee, Hudson Lee, Joyce Lee, Kevin Lee, Nathan Lee, Jordan Leith, Tim Lee, Rachel Lisker, Esther Liu, Grant Lumen, Brianna Liu, Eric Mai, Emily Manon, Darby Marks, Sean McCoy, Emily Mello, Jose Mendoza Lopez, Tiffany Merlinski, Rachel Mikofsky, Chanel Morrison, Aris Morlatos, Jeremy Orentrike Orloff, Federico 
Palacardo. Abhinav Pandi. Joe Peltz. Luisa Perez. Luis Javier Perez Valencia. Stephanie Pierre. Sarah Qureshi. Madison Rex. Carlos Rico. Maxine Ryder. Nicholas Roberts. Natalia Ruskowska. Brandon Sosa. Yashas Srinivasan. Eric Takushin. Nade Abdullah Tanuki. Nicholas Tedro. Gianni Thomas. Eileen Ugerbiel. Adam Wong. Crystal Wong. Mark Wishman. Isabel Wolf. Miles Wood. Paul Young. Kyle Zappi. Jacob Zeitlin. William Jung. Class of 2024, I am thrilled to welcome you into the Weill Cornell Medicine family as students and as our physicians of the future. To each and every one of you, a very warm welcome. And to your families, friends, loved ones, and all who have supported you on your journey to this point, thank you. They could not have reached this milestone without you. You members of the class of 2024 bring an unparalleled combination of diversity of thought and experience, intellectual firepower, and unlimited curiosity to Wild Cornell. And just as you are committed to your studies here, we are committed to you and to doing all we can do to ensure your success. As you begin to write this new chapter of your lives, you are the future of medicine. Thank you to everyone for joining us today and welcome to Wild Cornell Medicine.